morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Brendan the Navigator Parish and Our Lady of Good Hope Church. Today is the 22nd Sunday in ordinary time. Please take a moment to silence or turn off your cell phone. Face masks must be worn during mass and must cover the entire nose and mouth. If you are receiving communion on the tongue, please receive at the end of the communion line. Today we hear Jesus tell his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, where he will suffer and be killed, and that, guess what, whoever comes after him must pick up his cross and follow him. It must have been quite a shock. This is the first time Jesus told them this. We know what happened nearly 2,000 years ago, but the challenge is new for each generation of disciples. Are we willing to pick up? Our crosses will we follow. Let our sharing in the Eucharist strengthen us as we take up the cross and follow him. Mass today will be offered for Charlie Garrett. Now let's have a moment of silence as we prepare for the celebration of Mass. song for this morning is number 724, A Rightful Place. Number 724. I confess to all my God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy.
pray. God of light, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourself to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It demands honesty from us. It demands 
a willingness as we hear very clearly in our readings today, a willingness to suffer, to suffer. Does Jesus not say, take up your cross? It demands a generosity from us, as St. Paul tells us so beautifully in our second reading today, and I quote, to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to God but also a challenge for us to be ready to follow Jesus Christ by working hard and with His grace to follow the commandments of love. As He tells us so beautifully, love one another, comma, no period there, love one another as I have loved you. The Lord tells us so clearly, if you want to love way I do, then allow me to help you to love, to forgive in that very way. Today's readings, my friends, explain how this Christian mission that's been given to us should be accomplished. Our readings explain how we should not only know, but live the will of God. And especially as he invites us today to accept suffering in our own lives and involved in it my friends that that suffering is truly an integral part of our earthly life but it is also our road to glory as revealed to us today as Jesus teaches us of his need now to go to Jerusalem to suffer to die and to rise he doesn't want to do it alone, too. He invites us to be an amazing part of that. In today's gospel, my friends, Jesus takes his disciples to, a, to really a, a new surprising level. After Peter's great confession, remember last week when Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? And of course, Peter's the one who only answered, the only one who answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Right after that, we continue our reading today, and that's when Jesus announces, I must go to Jerusalem to suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. After he said that, Peter didn't like that, right? The reading says, that, that Peter takes Jesus aside and he says, no way, God forbid, you aren't going to do that, suffer and die. Did you, know, did you hear Jesus' response to, to Peter? Get away from me, Satan. Now you need to know something very important here. When Jesus says that, he's not necessarily saying those very words to Peter. He's saying those words to the demon to Satan, that is, within Peter. He's telling the Satan within, get away from me, Satan. You're an obstacle to what I am doing. That's when Jesus then says, then you must deny yourself. You must take up your cross. You must follow Whenever I hear those, those particular words, I think of what happened years ago during the times of, the, of, of Pope St. John Paul II also, when Poland was still under communist control. How many of you are aware that the Prime Minister of Poland ordered that the crucifixes in all schools be removed from these classroom walls? Let me tell you, thank God the Catholic bishops are Catholic there. Yep, they attacked that ban, the bishops did, which really stirred a lot of waves, anger, resentment, all across Poland. And ultimately, the government relented. It still insisted in the written law that that needs to take place, but the government did agree not to press for the removal of the crucifixes, the crucifixes, the crosses, especially in schools. 
But you see, my friends, one very zealous communist school administrator in Poland. He was the director of an agricultural college there for very young adults. He himself took the crosses down from all the lecture halls in his school, where they had hung since the school was built in 1920. Days later, I love what happened. Those parents, those Catholics with profound faith, entered that very school, and you know what they did? They brought a bunch of other crucifixes, and they hung them in all the classrooms and in all the lecture halls. Well, the administrator even took those down. So the next day, two-thirds of the school body, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, what did they do? They staged a sit-in right outside in the grass of the school. Administrator called the heavily armed riot police, and they moved the students. They forced them onto the streets. Why? Because each one of them had brought with them that day a crucifix from home. And they would hold it up high, forced on the streets. What did they do? They decided to take a walk, still with the cross of Christ in one hand and the rosary in the other. What a, what a nice combination that is, right? Yes. Oh, I'm glad 17 of you agree. That's really good, yep. But anyways, what did they do? They decided to march to a nearby church. Guess who was waiting there in the church? 2,500 other high school youth and college students. They marched there with their, their hands held high with the rosary and with the crucifix of Jesus Christ. And there the priest prayed with them. 3,000 kids packed in his church praying with the Lord in one hand and Mary in the other. Soldiers even surrounded that church. But guess who walked in? <laughs> the press. The press took all kinds of photos which journeyed throughout the world photos of youth who have been given and still own and celebrate their own faith in Jesus Christ and proudly took, they took photos of those youth and young adults holding on to the crucifix, holding on to their rosary. And they began to weep. <laughs> Can you picture that? They all began to weep when the priest began to teach and to preach and he ended by saying, there is no Poland without the cross. There is no Poland. There's no country Poland without the cross of Christ. And I'd be amazed one day if the youth and, and the young adults in our country would, they pro would dare to proclaim there is no United States of America without the cross of Jesus Christ. Maybe for us Americans, maybe the cross has just become maybe a, a symbol of comfort. Or we have it hanging maybe in our home. But we haven't sacrificed as much as many other countries around the world have. Being truly persecuted. Oh, it's coming in our country, my friends. We will be persecuted. But will we be holding on to our crucifix? We'll be holding on to our rosary and knowing what they're all about and praying. I believe that the more that we understand profoundly within ourselves, our minds and our hearts, why the Savior, our Savior Jesus Christ, walked the streets of Jerusalem with the cross only to go to Calvary and be crucified. But he had taken the night before all the sins of the world within him so that our sins would not run away from him, but be touched by his precious blood. The more we understand that, the more we will understand a sense of sin in our life and a sense of our Savior. Let's close with, uh, with Peter, because Peter is involved in this gospel today. I don't know if you're aware, my friends, but there is an ancient legend 
about St. Peter, and it's based on a novel and on an amazing movie. See, at the time of persecutions, about 30 years after the, the Last Supper, Passion, Death, and Resurrection, and Ascension, and the Descent of the Holy Spirit, Peter worked hard to announce the good news of Jesus Christ, even in the midst of great perse persecution, especially under the Emperor Nero, who had many believers of Jesus Christ killed. But the followers of Jesus gathered with Peter over 30 years after Jesus was in heaven and sent the Holy Spirit, and they told him, Peter, you are too valuable. They wanted to kill you. They highly encouraged him, Peter, get out of Rome. Go to place someplace really safe. And then when you're safe, then go to another city and continue to preach the good news. So Peter, listen, he took off. He hurried outside of Rome not to be seen. And he got himself on the Appian Way, which is a major road right outside Rome that leads to many other cities. But something very interesting happened along the way of the Appian Way. Guess who Peter met? the way. <laughs> Hadn't seen him in over 30 years. Who was walking towards Rome? Jesus. The amazing line uh, that Peter proclaimed then to Jesus is, is, is there's a church that's built at that very site. The church of Quo Vadis Domine, which is Peter's question. Where are you going, Lord? Because Peter saw it. You know, Jesus going towards Rome and into Rome. And Jesus responded to Peter, I am going back to Rome to be crucified again with my people. And then Jesus asked the question to Peter, Where are you going, Peter? Apparently, Peter began to cry with profound remorse. And he turned around and he went into Rome knowing what would happen to him. And exactly that's what happened. He was crucified, but he asked to be crucified upside down. And why? Because the legend tells us that Peter could not see himself being crucified in the very same way as Jesus was. He said he was not worthy to be crucified that way. My friends, Jesus' question to Peter comes to us today too. We must hear that very question. We must hear Jesus asking us, where are you going? Where are you going? My friends, are we going with Christ? Or our lives saying even more loudly, are we going away from him and from his cross? My friends, today that's the really most important question. Because my friends, it doesn't matter how far we have traveled. What does matter is the direction in which we are going. We humbly, my friends, and profoundly and proudly stand as we express to the Lord our belief in Him. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary. Amen. For our sake, he was crucified and lost his life. He 
suffered death and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We have heard God's precious word, his precious invitation. And now we humbly ask the Lord to listen to our own words of need and to respond to them. For the church that it serves as a model of sacrificial love, leading us eagerly and joyfully to take up Christ's cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders who exhibit a true spirit of dedication to justice, peace, authentic freedom, and generous defense of the poor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who, like the prophet Jeremiah, feel duped by God and those who have turned away from the Catholic faith, may they experience the fire of God's love for them and be open to discern his will in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the loss of life and property during Hurricane Laura this week in Louisiana, that family and friends of the deceased may be consoled and all may be able to rebuild their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to racial tensions in this country and for the awareness that every human life has inherent dignity by being created in the image and likeness of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unemployed and all who are in financial difficulty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community that continue to serve the public during this pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the Holy Eucharist that nourishes us to live a spirit-filled life as we serve God's kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for Charlie Garrett. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And most heavenly Father, in this moment of stillness, we lift up to you our own personal intention. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And yes, Heavenly Father, we believe that you will answer us. For we pray in the precious name of your Son, Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands with the praise and glory of His name for our benefit of all His holy church. May the sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and eternal God through Christ, our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> the thing. 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you. And with your spirit. And with our eyes full of the love of God, we gave at each other, wishing each other a sign of his peace.
God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Today is being live streamed. We certainly welcome all of you who are in your homes praying with us. I invite you, my dear friends at home, to pray. Ask the Lord to come within you in this spiritual communion. I invite you at home, those of you who wish to pray with them and help them to pray this prayer, this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment. Receive you, sacramentally. Receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually. Come at least spiritually. Into my heart. Into my heart. I embrace you. I embrace you. As if you were already there. As if you were already there. And unite myself. And unite myself. Holy to you. Holy to you. Never permit me. To be separated from you. To be separated from you. Amen. We invite those on the lectern side of the church to come to communion first.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to Saint Michael. Saint Michael the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Go make a difference. Number 498. 